Pop Fatula. The Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Monday, October 27th. It was cloudy in Los Angeles. We were working a night watch on a homicide detail. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Pat Brown, chief detective. My name's Friday. We were on the way out from Central Division, and it was 15 minutes past 8 p.m. when we got to South Peoria Street. Number 267. George Groomy, uh, sir. Yeah, Looks like we're in for some rain. Yes, sir? Police officer. Lieutenant Barker here. Yes, you want to come in? Thank you. This is Sergeant Romero. I'm Sergeant Friday, Central Homicide. How are you? My name's Todd Jimmett. Lieutenant Barker's in here. Uh, on the phone now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll Yeah. 
Thank you for letting me. No, thank you, Miss Liz. Well, we had some sandwiches about an hour ago. Sure, I can't fix it up. No trouble. No, sir. Thanks, Terrible night. Terrible night. Terrible night. And now, Helen, just, just a little while longer, we'll, we'll find the girl. It'll be daylight soon. Oh, uh, Miss Griswold, some of your neighbors tell us that there were two strangers here in the neighborhood this afternoon. Yes, yeah. but that was earlier. Mrs. Nelson next door and I was talking about it. One was the gardener looking for work. The other one was starting work. What time were they around, Miss? Well, sir, here about noon. The gardener was... About two o'clock. Mm-hmm. How is your daughter about strangers? Does she make friends easily? Yeah, not at all. Tell me very careful about that. She's going to go with strangers, I'm sure. Why do you ask that question, Sergeant? Have you found out something? No, sir. No, we haven't. It's just a routine check, that's all. I don't understand it. Hey, girl. I don't know. They're saying something must happen. I know. No, no, Helen. You've been doing fine. Don't let down now. Joe, hmm? Mr. Brown's car just pulled up outside. Thanks. Ben? Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Griswold. Mr. Griswold. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Here, let me show you the door. We'll meet at the end of Fancy's Drive, Mr. Griswold, about 6 a.m. It should be light enough by then. Oh, all right. Oh, Sergeant. There is a chance, isn't there? Girls are all right. There's a good chance. You try not to worry. Come on, Ben. Thank you. Mm. Anything? 
No, not. All right, come on. It's almost two thirty. Yeah, too much coffee. Sour stomach. Me too. You got a cigarette on my own. Oh, yeah. Okay. Had to be lured there and by someone they knew. Any ideas? Could have been one of the neighbors. 
Yeah, we checked every possible out there, Glenn. We questioned them a half a dozen times. So do I. There's one that might fit. Who's that? Claude Jimerson. Glenn Chandler had been a veteran homicide officer before Ben and I joined the department. He was tall, quiet, and reserved. He had a good reason for everything he did, for everything he thought. The three of us sat down and tried to put the pieces together. Number one, Chandler uncovered a point that Ben and I had missed completely. Jimerson and his wife were not close friends of either the Sperry family or the Griswolds. For a near stranger, he showed an extraordinary interest in the welfare of the children after they disappeared. Number two, Ben and I discovered that Jimerson's wife had an eight-year-old boy by a previous marriage. The child did not live with them. Mrs. Jimerson told Chandler that her husband had been cruel to the boy. He refused to elaborate. Number three, Jimerson was the last person to see the children alive. Number four, the bodies of the children had been well hidden in the underbrush. Jimerson found them. Number five, Jimerson had bent over backwards to make friends with the investigating officers right from the start. If any veteran officer can tell you, that's not the usual attitude. At 8.30 a.m., Chandler, Ben, and I left the office. We spent the day taking back 15 years into Jimerson's life. We got back to the office just after midnight. Thursday, October 30th, 10 a.m., we checked in. Okay, Joe, all right. Thanks. Come on, then. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Now, 
Walker? Yeah, I see. Those little girls. Thelma Griswold. Barbara Stern. Oh, yeah. This way. Please. Right here, Joe. Yeah, Thelma Griswold. I'll cover.